Wow, look at that. Was that a picture or was that the actual lights? Is that a new version that goes underneath the table? Uh huh. See how it's going underneath the table? That's cool. Okay. So, the back right there is the same thing as this. It was blown up. And that is our salt water vapor series that we just introduced for purifying the saline solution of the blood and the water in the body, which is the next paradigm. So, just so you know, that's that's where we're. This is an entry point. That's pretty cool. That's very very cool. The other thing is, is that there are other supportive pictures that I can show if you want me to. That's why I'm just holding them up to see how they look. Uh, I can see the glare in some cases, but like that right there is what's going on at the Patriots Clinic in Oklahoma City with the uh, oxygen chambers. This is what happens to the blood cells. They start to separate. You can see the cells over here are all clogged and reload, and they separate. So when they start separating, the person starts to behave differently energetically. That's what I. Those are some studies that we have done, uh, and then ultimately the cells are in the frequency to the point where you can actually see the energy in the nucleus of the cell. Okay, see that right there, the energy cells in the nucleus. So that's something you won't see anywhere else. That helps identify the data that a shift is occurring, even though people can't see it. What's going on on the inside? So what's it look like after you get done eating a cheeseburger? <laughs> same, thing, same thing with brain waves. Both same people do EEG tests, and what happens is the alpha and the theta go up in values. Uh, <laughs> That is wild. You're on mute. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can hear you now. I can hear him fine. It's not. It's it's too horrible on my. You want him to pick the phone up? Yep, yep. Hey, hey, Aaron. Yeah. Can you um can you take yourself off speaker, please, and put it to your ear? Can you take yourself off speaker and put it on your ear, please? There you go. Oh, much better. Donna? Give me a sound check. Just say it like I'm on the phone. How's that? Donna, I you're on. I have to keep talking so I can hear. Um, Aaron, just keep talking. Okay. Better. And just talk directly into the phone. Yeah, he's doing that. It was the placement of the uh, the speaker on my end that was okay. causing the problem. Yeah, but then the, you know you've got him on speaker and you're on speaker, so it's no, going to sound much clearer. Anymore. Okay, perfect. All right, we're getting ready to go live, guys. Live, Erin. <laughs> okay, cool. We're getting ready to go live, Erin. Actually, we are we are live, Donna. We're gonna go live, <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. <laughs> Sometime after eight. <laughs> <laughs> 
Welcome, everyone, to the MDM Show. I am your co-host, Donna Whittington, and, of course, the host, Peter Shank. And we've got an incredible guest tonight. Our incredible guest tonight is going to talk to us about Tesla Energy Lights and just the importance of energy lights and just you know what it does to our bodies and so we're going to talk about frequencies and subtle energies and things like that we're going to get the show kicking because we've got a lot of information to get to tonight Peter of course is going to do a live activation so get your water ready folks and um, let's just go ahead and kick this off Peter how are you Don I'm doing great glad good to be back had a nice relaxing weekend, um, ATVing up in New Hampshire uh, for quadding for those that are, you know, out in Arizona. But uh, it was very, very cool. Uh, I made it back, five-hour ride back. Here I am, and uh, we're ready to kick some butt. Right, we are ready to kick some MDM butt because, folks, if you've seen the email that we have. Um, We've got a very strong September for you, of course, starting it off with Aaron Goldhart and, again, with the Tesla lights and then Ken Rolla and um, Eric also is going to end up um, closing September out for us. So real strong September. Let's get it kicking off with Aaron. Aaron, how are you, sir? We are doing great. Thank you so much, Donna. So, Aaron, can you, like, get started and talk to us? First of all, give us a little bit of background about you and how you came to Tesla Lights, and um, and then, of course, talk to us about Tesla Lights. Okay, Tesla Energy Lights uh, came into my life as a result of a friend of mine who had uh, been looking for resolution uh, with his cancer. So I was just simply being a friend and came across this technology in my research to find that inventors um, don't market very well. And so that was my background, working with uh, companies to help them with the uh, uh, communications, which would involve anything that was on the computer, graphically, uh, advertising, TV, radio, newsprint, billboards, what have you. So what I did is I fired all my clients and I took this up because my intuition said, you have to do this. And so my start was to share that's my energy lines with people that I was just becoming acquainted with from other friends just to share it, just to see what would happen. I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I'm not a practitioner, I'm not a PhD, and yet a full life of events were to occur that were my path. And that is, is to help people help themselves. So I discovered what do we really have here because the inventors weren't telling me I had to do this on my own. And the first hint that I had from advisors were go collect data. So that's what I did. I went on a path of finding other equipment that could read subtle energy, and I found some did, some didn't, and some people respond to the energy more consciously, and some people don't. So there's a lot of contrast in the behavior of subtle energy, because what subtle energy is, as I found out, it's what makes us all be alive. And so the Tesla Energy Lights produces the same thing. An energy that creates uh, a force field that feeds us. And in so doing, uh, now I can talk about it because I've done enough ex ex experiments, studies, observations, uh, working with everything from children to 95 year old people, homeless, veterans, uh, various clinics, spirituality. Uh, relationships with people that in marriage, birthing, I mean, you know, it's just everything under the sun because that's what everything is made of. It's made of energy and that's what this does. So that gives you kind of a synopsis of nine years of continual traveling 
from Hawaii to Africa, all over the U.S., working with all the things I was just mentioning. How's that? Aaron, that's uh, this is really cool stuff. You know, we had a, a phone call on um, Friday or Saturday where we talked a little bit about the tech and we got to know each other a little bit. And since then, I've done quite a bit of research on your website and elsewhere about the technology. Um, why noble gases? Okay. Well, first of all, we all breathe air, and as we breathe that into our lungs, it transmutes into a humidification and feeds us well that's on the physical level on the fifth dimension in other words a step above our physiology is what we call source and so when you use a natural ingredient that we already consume then it's very natural in other words we're already breathing air so the noble gases come from the air all it is is taking the nitrogen and hydrogen, neon, argon, krypton, uh, all these gases, including oxygen, and uh, they, they siphon it off as they lower the temperature of, of the air, and then they make tubes specifically with those frequencies. What we discovered is, is that our center tube, which is very unique, is made of quartz crystal. And so, with that being massively large, with air, it has a full spectrum of frequencies, just like the sun has a full spectrum of frequencies. So, as a result, the energy now can go into a field, and that field is around us. It's our own field merged with a field that comes from those electrons that come from those noble gases. And we consume them on an energetic level. So we don't have to digest them or process them. They just go in. They're permeable. And so it's a natural occurrence, just like you would be the desire of a organ that you're transplanting. You want to make sure that it's going to work in the new person with their blood type. Well, in this case, they all have the same thing. They all have that energy. So it will go into any person animal and plant. So, um, for all the, the people that are joining um, the call with us live tonight, um, I mean, they, they stumble across your website, right? Yes. What do you do with this technology? How does it work? Um, you know, how can it help me personally? Me. What, okay. what, what can it do that, you know, what can it do for me? Well, let's, let's put it this way. It's not what it can do for you. Remember what JFK said back in the 60s? <laughs> That's what you can do for your country? Yes. Well, this is about what can you do for yourself? Because everybody that's listening to this call has the same thing in common. We all think, we all feel, and we all believe. And in order for us to create in this world, you have to do one of those three, or all of those three, in order to manifest. I don't care whether it's a relationship, a business, income, travel, your health. In other words, anything, your mission. So everything that we do is always guided by our intention. And so when we see our intention, what happens is we create. So what the lights do is they feed us just like your car. When you get in your car, the gas feeds you, and what happens is your car runs and you direct yourself wherever you're going. Well, this energy works the same way. It feeds us to direct our choice making. And since we use subtle energy to manifest, when we get more of it, it's like, like money. Like having more money, you can spend more if you have more. So if you have more energy, now all of a sudden you're sustaining yourself in wellness, in balance, in clarity, in terms of the qualities of life that we're looking to have with ourselves and with each other. So 
the consequence of being in this field is multidimensional. And what that means is, is that because we think, because we feel, not just because we have a physical body, because we believe and we have a spiritual essence of beliefs, it affects all of us. And therefore, at different times, in different ways, we have a different experience. Well, that means that you cannot predict what it's going to do with you. It's totally up to you. Just like as I used the car example, the gas doesn't tell you where to go. You decide where you're going to go. And how do you do that? With your intention. So you're managing and directing yourself. So this is a tool of empowerment. And that's what makes this so different from any other system or device that you've ever seen. Because most systems are designed to fix you, do something, let's say like a laser or an LED light or microcurrent. All these different devices are, are wonderful devices. They're not multidimensional. They don't situate you in a balance where you can think clearer or feel more, uh, more available to yourself or with an emotional intimacy with your partner or your connection to God. All these different things we already do, but if we enhance it, all of a sudden we do it better. Okay, so so for instance, let's say I want to I want to manifest an amazing relationship in my life, and I, I stumble across your website. How is this tech? How can I help the technology help myself? Well, what happens is, is when you do a session. You're going to lay down. Laying down is the same behavior that you use to self-heal every day of your life. So that means you go into an altered state. And that altered state is, well, just close your eyes and you'll feel it more clearly and succinctly. <laughs> just lay down on your sofa. I'm in an altered state all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it does is it affects your alpha and your beta state. Because your beta, which is where we are right now in this discussion, may be to survive, to question, to scrutinize, to figure out things. But underneath it all, you have another operating system that does not have uh, your overriding capability. In other words, you can't control your heartbeat. Not really. It controls itself. I mean, it regulates based on what you do. But you don't sit there thinking about it all day, how, how it should work. Same thing with your breathing, your autonomic nervous system, fight or flight, the things that you uh, have, that you operate with to breathe. Okay? So these, these areas are something that, that come with the package. Your immune system, all of these things, they already work. So consequently, how you help yourself is that when you lay down and go into the same state that you do, but in an amplified way, start using your intentions. And those intentions can get magnified to materialize. That, that's what I'm talking about. I've had people that are homeless, for example, that within three weeks, they were finding themselves literally homes jobs, an awareness of how to treat their family with love that they hadn't done ever. They dropped the bottle. They stopped drinking. Why? But they had enough confidence energetically to get up out of the rubble and become more of what they wanted to be. They just didn't have the energy to do it. In other words, like at night, if you are a young person of, you know, 15, 20, 30 years old, you don't think anything of energy. You just have it, you use it, and you go about your day and, and your business. When you're in your 60s, 50s, 70s, it may be a different story. If we've exhausted ourselves at 8 or 9 o'clock at night, we're just like too tired to get up and go and have other things to do, then we lose that potential. So consequently, when we have more energy, as I said earlier, as if you had more money, you get to spend it. That means that the hours that you're living during the day have more accessibility to the, the life that you want to have. It doesn't mean you have to be sick to use this. A lot of people think they need to be healed. What about 
the 95% of other people who don't have an issue, they just want to have a better life. That's the, uh, the, the audience that I'm addressing. And so therefore, if you feel, let's say you just got out of a relationship and you go into shock, or you just were in a car accident and you got hit behind and you're in shock, or you see a picture of somebody horrified because they lost an arm and you see the blood and you just want to faint. I mean, any number of different things can set off a, a piece of you that needs a little bit of support. And what we've seen is that when people do a session, unbeknownst to us, because we don't get told these things have happened, they tell us after the fact, they'll say, you know, I'm back in my body. I feel better. There's something that's working. Don't have a finger on it, but I know it's as, after, as a result of using the lights. So those are the types of things that, that, you know, you don't go to a chiropractor and say, I'm in shock, fix me. What you do is you go to the chiropractor if you've been in a car accident and you tell him my neck is hurting, you know, help me get out of the pain. So what does he do? He gives you an adjustment. Well, he's not thinking about whether you're in shock or not because that's not what he's qualified to do. However, we have many chiropractors that have the Tesla energy lights. You put the client on the lights first. So they go into a less stress attitude. They start to relax. They start to release. Then all of a sudden, when he does his adjustments, they hold longer. Why? Because there's more energy in that person's system, hold it, and there's a perk, a twofer. Oh, by the way, the person has gotten back in their body more grounded, and they're more present instead of in kind of in a spaced out place, or la-la land. So consequently, you find this out, maybe incidentally, it's not something you can predict and say, like I said, well, fixed by, you know, being out of my body. This person doesn't even know it. How do they know that? It's when they get back in their body, and then they'll, they'll testify, oh, guess what? Uh, I've got a testimonial for you. Guess what? I'm back in my body, and I feel better. So it's it's sometimes you know, a little surprising as to what the person is doing to the court. Um, I'll give you another example. Uh, we work with the monks. Uh, they invited us to share with them the energy. They were traveling throughout the United States on the floor, and they just wanted to feel better. So we took the lights in behind the stage before they were doing their ceremonies. And their report to us was very innocent. Uh, and it was very simply that they were sharing that they could get to their level of consciousness in meditation literally in five minutes, but normally would take them 45. So when we learned that, it was pretty evident that there's a a amplification and that's you know that's for them that's for their situation uh we didn't know that was going to occur before until they reported it so there's a lot of discoveries that that we hear incidentally and they're beautiful uh, and that's why i have shot 120 videos throughout the years to record incidences and studies and people you know giving us their accountings because they're not necessarily medical. They might be something totally in another area that you wouldn't think of. And one more example, I had some, a couple in, in Georgia that wanted to get pregnant and they had been working on it for a couple of years and were very unsuccessful. They were on the lights, I think, four times, five times within a few weeks and bingo. This is not the first time we heard it. It was just the first time we recorded it. So we have a little testimonial from uh, a couple that had their child, beautiful child, and they're very happy because obviously, you know, it, it worked. Now, here's the thing about the energy. You can't give the credit to the energy. You have to give it to the intention of this couple because placebo has a lot to do with what you believe. So if you take the credit for having thought of the resolution and fueled it, now you've got synergy, and that's why this works, because the individual must take a position of interactivity to have it work. It's not a traditional uh, entitlement package where you take a pill and it fixes you. That's not what this is. This is simply neutral energy that 
goes into our system permeably because it's made of what we are, and therefore we can process it in our own way. So what is it going to be for you when you get on the lights? I don't know. <laughs> I encourage you to come up with a list of things that you want to create. So it's it's interesting to me um, the spin that you have on manifesting, um, and, and you know I have um, the Source Four, which is a manifestation program, which does amazing things for people, and we're gonna do that here in a little bit. But you know when I when I started out um, trying to understand manifestation. And, and the way it worked, my my idea was was much more simplistic. You know, I, I studied, um, I read a lot of documents, a lot of old manuscripts on you know how people would manifest things, and and in the research that I did, it really boils down to um, a simple way. You know, you manifest in your head exactly what you want to bring into fruition. Um, you release it to the universe, the universe grabs it, brings it upstream in your data reality, in your path, if you will, and then starts creating that reality in perfect harmony with the trajectory that you're on. And along that path, if you have any doubt or worry, that thought form is destroyed, right? Um, that's traditionally um, was my understanding of how people would manifest things in their life. And the direction that I took it, what was very different um, than clearly than what, what you're doing. Um, I created light paths, so the manifestation doesn't come out of the human mind. We consciously direct it in the water. You drink that water, and it comes out of the body in what we call light paths, taking out and shielding the path from any doubt or worry that you have along it, and then it comes in. And, and the one thing that always blows me away is repeatedly when people come back and say, Oh my God, you know, I've manifested this in my life. It, every single time it happens, it's always better than what they originally wanted. So there was a woman that, um, grabbed the source for a few weeks back and, um, she wanted to manifest a hundred dollars and she did the next day she got three coupons one was twenty five dollars off to some department store and she had two from the dentist office that was uh, you know for seventy five dollars and she's like man i should have i should have asked for cash instead but it, it's funny just the way it comes it always happens better um so for for people that are poking around in your website now um can you just kind of explain why you use the name tesla and and what your relationship was to him and, and what parts of the technology that he may have integrated in the reality um, that you're using in this in this really cool stuff? Sure, Peter. Uh, Tesla was a, uh, a downloader. He was able to receive information and it created pain in the system because it, it not only was information, it was the energy. It was like being electrocuted on a very mild level. We're not talking lobotomy, we're just talking about a force field that was so strong that he would feel residues from it. And there are people that I know that have had that same experience and they're magnificent. They bring in things that don't exist elsewhere, not in books, not in schools. And that's the way he did it. So he had a very open channel. I can't tell you what it is really because it's not, I don't have that. So it's I operate uh, a little differently, but I've had the same type of downloads from experiences using the lights because my frequencies were opened like portals. And when that first happened, I was just beside myself because I'm not a PhD. I don't have that background, but I was getting information that I could share with our intuitives, which is how they built the initial uh, units. So all of a sudden I became a developer of the frequencies of the tubes because I made a commitment that I chose to do that based on the fact that I felt like I could manifest this and I wasn't being a smart ass. I was just simply committed to an outcome beyond, uh, beyond just thought. It was in my feeling. It was in my heart. 
And I believe that when we commit ourselves to such intensity that that electromagnetic spark tells life to draw it closer to us, somehow and in some way it reaches us through different situations that could never have otherwise occurred. Those have spoken about this in the 1700s quite eloquently. And I initially read that and said, I'm, I'm a part of that. I am willing to commit. Because when I do, what happens is that using the lights creates balance. And what I learned from my experience of the balance was is that in, in, ob in observing is that we generally choose black or white, good or bad, right or wrong. All these are polarity uh, uh, opposites. And yet there are, are other choices. If I make a choice, I basically remove the other choices I could have had. However, if I allow the possibility of other uh, ingredients to come into my space, it's like you were talking about the coupons. You say a hundred bucks and you allow the possibility of what's worth a hundred bucks to come to you. You didn't say cash. You just got the, the, the numeric income. So in the same relationship, what we're doing is we're self balancing by going into 